Okay, so in this video, we will find the Taylor series of the function 1 over x squared minus 1 centered at negative 3. Now we know we can try to find a Taylor series for a function by finding higher derivatives, evaluating those higher derivatives at the center of the expansion, then hopefully seeing a pattern so we can then replace the nth derivative of the function at the center of the expansion by a general formula of n therefore having an explicit formula for the coefficients of the Taylor series of the function centered at x0. Well, if we try this here, if we start differentiating the function 1 over x squared minus 1 and taking consecutive derivatives, then we will find that very quickly the derivatives will get quite messy, and then when we evaluate them at the center, negative 3, the pattern will not be obvious to find. So this approach of finding higher derivatives of the function, then evaluating them at the center of the expansion, and hopefully seeing a pattern, is not the best solution here. You can try it out, but you will, as I've just said, find that the higher derivatives get messy very quickly, and when you evaluate them at the center of the expansion, which here is negative 3, the pattern will not be so obvious. There is here a simpler solution, as the function f of x is a simple rational function. So we can find a way around the higher derivatives approach using instead the idea of decomposing a rational function into a sum of partial fractions and then our knowledge of geometric series. So recall that 1 over 1 minus r can be expressed as a infinite series, and the equality is valid only if an absolute value r is strictly less than 1. So now let's take the function f of x 1 over x squared minus 1. We can factor x squared minus 1 as x minus 1 times x plus 1 and then we can try and decompose this simple rational function into a sum of two partial fractions. Some multiple over x minus 1 plus some multiple over x plus 1. I will leave it to use an exercise to find that a is 1 half and b is also 1 half. So we can factor a half from both and then we'll be left with 1 over x minus 1 Oh, I'm sorry, you'll find that a is positive a half, but that b is negative a half. So it will be minus 1 over x plus 1. So that's the first step. Factoring, so we can then decompose the function as a sum of two simple partial fractions, as both a and b are multiples of a half, namely a is positive a half, b is negative a half, we can factor a half up front as a constant multiple. And now, well, we can tweak both simpler rational functions in the form 1 over 1 minus r so as to obtain an infinite series. Now, of course, because we want the center of the expansion to be negative 3, well, we want to have powers of x minus negative 3, therefore of x plus 3. This will be our x minus x0. So we want, in both cases, half terms of the form x plus 3 to the n popping up in the series. Well, this will come from the r, so we need r to contain a term of the form x plus 3. So, this can be easily accomplished. So, 1 over x plus 3, but of course now we are cheating, we have to fix this. Well, what added to 3 gives us negative 1? Of course, negative 4. So this takes care of the first function. And what plus 3 will give us positive 1? This is, of course, negative 2. So now we have the x plus 3 in both cases in place for the r. 
The only problem, of course, we need 1 over 1 minus r. Well, to transform the negative 4 into a 1, factor negative form from the denominator. To transform negative 2 into a 1, factor negative 2 from the denominator. This will leave you with 1 minus x plus 3 over 4 minus factoring the negative 2 now will give you negative 2 times 1 minus x plus 3 over 2. And now we're essentially there, right? We have 1 over 1 minus r, so in the first case, x plus 3 over 4 plays the role of r. In the second case, we have 1 over 1 minus r, and so x plus 3 over 2 plays the role of r. So we can now replace each expression, 1 over 1 minus r, in both cases, by the corresponding series. Notice that again, the series equality will be valid only if an absolute value r is less than 1, which means that if this is less than 1 in absolute value, then x plus 3 in absolute value must be less than 4, and x plus 3 in absolute value must be less than 2. So if we want both series to be valid, well, we have to take the more restrictive condition, which is that x plus 3 is less than 2. So, both equalities in terms of series will be valid if x plus 3 is less than 2 in absolute value. So the first series, and I'll multiply a half both, so it'll be a half times 1 over negative 4 times the 1 over 1 minus r, which is of course the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, r to the n, which here is just x plus 3 over 4 to the n. Positive a half minus 1 over negative 2, so this will give you a half times positive a half, And again, 1 over 1 minus r is the series, and going from 0 to infinity, r to the n, therefore x plus 3 over 2 to the n. And the equality between this rational function and these two power series is only valid if an absolute value x plus 3 is strictly less than 2. Well, let's just simplify by combining both Taylor series together. And if you notice here, 2, or I should say 4 is 2 squared, so we will be able to put everything under a power of 2. So we have here well, 2 times 4 is 8, that's negative 1 over 2 cubed. The sum from 0 to infinity, x plus 3 to the n. And if you think of 4 again as 2 squared, 2 squared to the n will be 2 to the 2n, plus 1 over 2 squared, Both series have a constant multiple, constant with respect to n, so we can bring both multiples in front of, well, inside the series. So this will give us negative series from 0 to infinity, x plus 3 to the n, 
over 2 to the n to the 2n plus 3 plus to the n times 2 to the 2 is 2 to the n plus 2. And now we can just combine them as one Taylor series. So this will be this term minus this term, but if you notice, both terms have an x plus 3 to the n, so I'll factor that out which will leave me with 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 minus 1 over 2 to the 2n plus 3. Times, of course, x plus 3 to the n. And finally here, I will combine under a common denominator. Well, The larger power of 2 is 2n plus 3. So here we have to multiply top and bottom by 2n plus 1. 2 to the n plus 1, sorry. As n plus 2 plus n plus 1 will give us 2n plus 3. So in the end, we'll have 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 on the numerator over 2 to the 2 n plus 3. And again, verify here. When you multiply the same base, you add the exponents. n plus 1 plus n plus 2 is 2 n plus 3. So this is the nth coefficient times x plus 3 to the n. And this is now the Taylor series of, if you recall, the simple rational function. I'll write it here. 1 over x squared minus 1. Taylor series centered at negative 3. And the equality between the function and its Taylor series centered at negative 3 is only valid when x plus 3 in absolute value is less than 2. Well, of course, if something in absolute value is less than 2, then the value itself must lie between negative and positive 2. Subtract 3 across, and you will get negative 5 less than x less than negative 1. So, if we visualize this onto the real line, the center of the series is negative 3. The left hand point of the interval of convergence is negative 5. The right end point is negative 1. So again, the center of the series is negative 3. x minus negative 3 is x plus 3. The interval of convergence of the Taylor series is the interval from negative 5 to negative 1, excluding both end points. And the distance from the center to both end points is equal to 2. And so the radius of convergence of the Taylor series is equal to 2. And that's it. So to summarize, we found the Taylor series of the simple rational function 1 over x squared minus 1 centered at negative 3, not by finding a pattern for higher derivatives of this function at negative 3, but instead first decomposing the simple rational function as a sum of partial fractions, and then, with a little bit of algebra, turning both simple partial fractions in the form of 1 over 1 minus r, which we can then turn into infinite series. Both series converge for different 
restrictions on x. If we want both to exist, we have to take the more restrictive condition, which we did, and from this point on it was just cleaning up both Taylor series and combining them into a single Taylor series. And the conclusion is that this is the Taylor series of 1 over x squared minus 1 centered at negative 3. And the equality between the function and its Taylor series is only valid on the interval from negative 5 to negative 1 excluding both endpoints. And that's it.